Peace. And Black Power Family, it's your Harlem educator, author, and activist, the Black Liberation Coach, Brother I.J. Taimba. And as always, I'm filming live on location at wonderful historical and political village of Harlem, New York. Family, uh, we uh, thank you for coming out to uh, Harlem Liberation School. Of course, because of the, the epidemic online, right? Because we're not really meeting like in a brick and mortar building right now. Um, we want to thank you for joining us. We know that some of you will watch live. Some of you won't catch it live. You'll see it later. And that's cool with us. It's cool with us as long as you catch it. You share this because the information that we're giving is always relevant. Is it? We, we, not, we don't come with some out of space stuff that doesn't really matter that nobody cares about. If somebody's on this show, they're important and what they're doing is important and black people need to know about it and support them. Uh, family today, we're going to be talking about the history and the importance of the black spades. Some would say gang, some say street organization, um, back in the 70s and 80s and even today. And we're going to get it from a source who can speak to it very directly as somebody that was a leader in the organization and is highly respected from what I know throughout the city and other parts of the country for his leadership in the organization. And so, family, without further delay, we bring it on my brother and your brother, uh, Brother Marion uh, Frampton, known on the street as Brother Tiny. What's up, good brother? Hey, my good brother. How you feel, man? Hey, man, I'm doing well, today? man. I'm, ble I'm blessed to be Thank breathing, you. brother. I'm very, very happy about that. Uh, listen, man, we want to thank you for your time. And uh, because you know that you know you're busy, and there's a lot of other things you could be doing. We we appreciate you being here with us. Uh, Listen, I want to get like, right. I like to thank you for having me. You know, absolutely, my brother. And so, family, if you're just tuning in, what we're talking about is the history and importance of the Black Spades organization, and we're speaking about this not from some journalist who covered it one day, not from some TV newsreel from somebody who was there, who's an integral part of this organization. Um, and so I think, um, Brother Tiny, one of the things I would like to do to paint the right picture for people is to help people understand what the Bronx was like in the 70s so that they can understand when you start talking about telling these stories, it's going to make sense to them. Could you help people understand what the Bronx was like in the 70s and the 80s? Well, you know what, though? I'm out of the South Bronx. I'm out of the Mount Haven Projects right across from Patterson. And around the 70s, the Bronx was burning. When you went up when you went up towards Charlotte Street and all these other places. And, you know, back in the days, like when the gangs was out, the, 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 the landlords the, the was paying gangs to set these buildings on fire. Back then, we looked like Beirut. Certain areas, parts of the Bronx looked like Beirut. You know, mm. and um, it, it was just 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 tore up back then. Wow. And um, I guess as a follow up to that. Do you think that that had an influence on the formation of the black space? So in other words, I guess what I'm really asking you is what forces do you think led you to join a gang or a street organization, and why did you join the Black Spades? Well, one of the reasons the Black Spades came into existence around um, 1969, and one of the reasons why the Black Spades came into existence was our founders were members of the Black Panthers and the Nation of Islam. The Black mm. Spades was never, ever, and I'm going to repeat, ever, ever to be a gang. The Spades came in in the Soundview area. And they came, they came out, you understand, to help the community. Back then, you know, we had a large drug drug population back then. And, 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 and a lot of people don't understand, blocks were locked down back then. We had a lot of places in the Bronx that we couldn't go into because you had the white gangs that we had to fight in all the high schools. So when, 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 when the spades came out, all they wanted to do was get into the schools safely and protect their neighborhoods from the drugs and everything like that. We were never, ever, ever to be a gang. But when the leadership turned over 
it went from one way to another way. Wow. Man, that that is very interesting. Um, now, when most people hear the word gang, Brother Tiny, you and I both know what goes in their head. Oh, it's a gang. There's some thugs. There's some, ho some hooligans. They, they, they robbing trucks. They burning down stuff. They robbing people. Now, to be honest, <laughs> you know that. <laughs> if we're if we going to be honest, we know there's some, some of that is involved. But we also know there's much more than just that, right? And so mm -hmm. uh, what are the things that you think people listening who have a very low opinion of street organizations think all they do is crime? If you can help broaden their perspective on what, what more they bring. Well, you know what? Though, back in back in the seventies, when you heard of gangs, you heard of gangs that was was dominating certain areas: skulls, nomads, reapers, javelins, seven immortals, uh, um, bachelors. You understand? And and each of these organizations was, was was monopolizing their area for one reason or another. And Quadis is kept; they was protecting the area. You know, if I sit here and say to you that 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 we didn't do dumb things as kids, I'd be lying. We did dumb things as kids to as kids as well. But basically, this is when the leadership of the spades turned over and, and, and our and our elders had left and new leadership came into play. And and when the new leadership came into play, we started increasing in numbers. When you hear gangs, you think, oh my God, let me run. But let me tell you when when the spades started back up in Soundview, you understand, people was welcome to see them. Mm. Welcome to see them going when you go in, when you was going, I can't get the other schools out of my mouth right now. But when you was going to all them schools up there, all the way up in the Bronx, you was welcome to see the spades because white gangs, we could do the Bronx. You understand mm. Roosevelt, Truman, a lot of these different places. And, and, and there was a lot of times we had to come up there and fight for our brothers and sisters. You know? And not only did we fight and I, and I'll say this and I'll say this, you understand out and out. Not only did we have to fight the white gangs, but we had to fight the police as well. Because in order to get in those neighborhoods, the white gangs was with the police because the police was white at that time. So, you know, mm. and then when you hear gang back then, before before it started getting violent, people welcomed. Today, there's a whole new different concept. We 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 wasn't into drugs back then. Back then, we would we understand it, it was forbidden for us to sell drugs back there. I can't talk for other gangs, but I know the black space, we had a cold and we had a, we had a cold and we had a rule. And that rule was we protect our neighborhoods and we wasn't selling drugs. Oh, everybody smoked reefer for, for the last 25 million years. But as far as hard drugs, none of our brothers and sisters was allowed, allowed to even touch those, those drugs. So, you know, when people hear the word gang, the first thing they hear is, they 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 want to hold their bags and 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 and, and they want to they want to they want to run and hide, and, and that's because it's it's turned over, and the gangs today are not like the gangs yesterday, you know, and 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 the concept that a lot of our young brothers have is not like it's not like what we had. I'm t you know back then we had laws, and if you didn't follow these laws, you was moved on. What I mean moved on, your gang would move on you. We understand because we had laws that had to be followed because we were so large and so strong. We couldn't take, you understand, anyone doing their own thing. Mm. Wow, man. So y'all regulated each other. Yes, we regulated each other. We understand. And, and, and we kept ourselves in line. You know, nowadays mm. you, you have, you know, these organizations today and, and it's hard to keep everybody in line because everybody got it a whole new different mindset and everybody wants to be in charge. Back then we had leadership and our leadership was very important. Our leadership was so strong. You understand that we could stand up to the church leadership or the police leadership because we followed orders. And if we didn't follow orders, it meant for somebody to die. And we followed orders. We followed mm. orders. So you know what? Let me give a scenario, Brother Tiny. I think I think we discussed this years ago, but for people watching, here's a scenario for you. So let's say somebody in your organization went to another part of town that's not a spades territory, 
and acted up, acted out, did some damage, wore the colors, wore whatever, and it got back to you. The 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 street over the gang that whose turf that was was upset by it, wanted to do something to the dude. Didn't catch him, but it got back to to your organization that one of your own did something knuckleheaded in another part of town. What what might he face? You know, back then, in order for all, I think it was over 100 gangs in the Bronx. And in order for us to survive wow. together, which we didn't survive all at one time because we was at war. A lot of us was at war. But in order for us to survive, we had rules and we had laws. If you If I came into your territory and we had peace with you, as, and and y'all put your hands on me, then we gonna come back and retaliate. But then we would deal with that brother who went into that neighborhood and act up. See, it, 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 we we would deal with that brother, but we wouldn't allow you to deal with that brother. Mm. We dealt with him because say, hey, yo, you know we had peace up there. Why you go do that? But in the same token, we dealt with those brothers because they nobody puts their hands on any of our brothers. No, right. our brothers and sisters, right or wrong. And that don't mean that you can go just go into another neighborhood and act out because these peace treaties were very, very important. It saved lives because it's like there it were so many gangs in the city that if you didn't have these peace treaties, you understand, so many people would have died. So these, so it was very important. And if something took place up in, in, in the North Bronx, then the North Bronx would, would have meetings with the South Bronx, West Bronx, East Bronx, Spades, and they would let them know, okay, we got, we got, we right now we got peace treaties with, 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 with the Savage Skulls. So that means Savage Skulls, if they exist anywhere, we would have peace. Now, if they violated it, then hey, you can't do nothing about it, but go to war. But we would try to uphold this peace because we know what the consequences are if, if we violate it. And if they violate it, and I said, hey, we, we, we did what we had to do. But we try to maintain these peace treaties because, and, and the peace treaties were like in the projects, every every block, you have these different blocks today, 143rd, 142nd, uh, 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 there was gangs in these blocks. And, 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 and everybody had, these gangs had set certain rules. Now, one thing the spades didn't do we don't turn our colors over. I don't care damn where we went. And, and we, we, we respect you, but we never turn our colors over. If if we was going into a hostile neighborhood and we know it was hostile, then we either stay away from it or we go in there knowing what we you know what had to be done. But we never turn our colors over and, and we never, you know what I'm saying? And we never went and, and, and disrespect anybody if we didn't have to. And I'm saying never, but we know it did. We always had souls that went in there and start trouble. But we right. dealt with them, even though they, if they got hurt or whatever, we went to retaliate. But then we dealt with our own people for, for what they had to do. We had strict rules and strict laws that had to be governed by the organization, because if not, then I would make everybody understand a renegade. And it was too many of us to be a renegade. Mm. Wow. We're going to probably come back. I'm going to come back to that issue of discipline in a minute. Brother Tiny, but uh, mm -hmm. right now I'm very interested to, to hear from you. Why do you think the Black Spades even came into existence? How, why, why were they born? Well, like I said earlier, the, our brothers, our, our founders, I won't say their names because I'm telling you a lot of our founders sit, sit, sit in some high seats today. And a lot of them don't say who they used to be. So we don't call their name as much. If they want to reveal themselves, then fine. But the spades came into existence up in the Soundview area of the Bronx because back in the 70s, there was a lot of drug. And there was a lot, and there was a lot of white gangs up there. You go into Truman, go into Roosevelt, you understand? A Bronx High School of Science. You wouldn't believe that a lot of blacks, the, the problems we had. You understand? Arthur Avenue. The, these schools were, were at that time were just tan blacks and Puerto Ricans up. So we would go up there and help our brothers and sisters from our neighborhoods. So you know, understand? And, and, and then a lot, lot of white gangs back there up in the Soundview section, Soundview section, we had they had to fight back then. 
So it wasn't like they became a gang. And then, like I said, we had a lot of drugs and the brothers and the brothers and sisters didn't want their mothers and fathers, you understand, to, to fall prey to those who were back there that was on drugs that was robbing. So when, when the space was formed, it was formed as an organization of men and women who was created from the Black Panthers and the Nation of Islam who wanted to work within their community. And, and, and no more, no less. And like I said, when the leadership changed over, when a lot of our founders left and the leadership turned turned over, it went another way. I'm not going to say it went another way for bad. It went another way for survival. Mm. And, and, and that's why the spades, you understand, that's why the spades came into existence. And it was a, and it was about it was a few of them. And they used the word black space because what suited us as black people? We, I mean, you know, they, they, they tried all kind of names, black jacks, uh, black mobiles, black this, black mm -hmm. that. But when they came to the word black spades, it just shot out. It shot mm -hmm. out and, and, and it rang in their ears. And they said, this is who we're going to become. We're going to become black spades. And, and, and that created the birth of the spades. Mm. Now, my understanding, Brother Tiny, correct me if I'm wrong, rescue me, brother, if I'm wrong, is that there were a hundred or more gangs in the South Bronx alone. Um, and so now I'm wondering, from everything I've read, it seems like the Black Spades were indisputably the largest, most powerful of all the gangs. Why? How do you think it is that the Black Spades became the largest gang out of all these gangs in the Bronx? Well, you know, back then, a lot of blacks was was attracted to the name Black Spades. It was something that we could identify with. But I want I want people out there to listen to this. The Black Spades were not only blacks; we had Spanish and we had whites. If out of the Mount Haven section where I live, we had the people that lived in Mount Haven were white, black, Spanish. We even had Chinese Spades down there. You understand? But but. The, the, the word black spade attracted the blackness of the black people. And, and, and it was it was something that 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 just that, that people was just fascinated by black spades. They identified with it. They also, you know what I'm saying? And, and when in my neighborhood, when we started, the spades came together, the Mount Haven section of the Bronx, we really come together as a gang. I st when I joined the Spades, I came together because we had drugs in our neighborhood. We had people coming into our projects. You understand that was robbing people. We kept all that out of, out, out of our projects. So, you know, and it's like we became one of the largest street gangs in the city of New York. And don't get me wrong. There was gangs. You understand? But we were one of the largest. The girls were large. The bachelors was large. You understand? We don't take nothing from nobody. But we became in the city throughout the five boroughs, became one of the largest gang, and we fought every gang. We fought gang and we survived. And, 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 and this is our numbers increased, increased, increased. In the South Bronx alone, I think there was over forty thousand spades. Now somebody will protest that. Somebody don't want to believe that. But you know there was a, there was spades all over. You understand? There was spades all over the Bronx. And we Wait had these numbers. We had. You know, I'm sorry, Tiny. Wait a yeah. minute. So this is sounding like a movie that I was fascinated with as a as a child, The Warriors. It's reminding me of the uh the riffs. It's like the black spades were like the riffs in the movie. Well, you know what though? Uh there was a young man that lived in um Mount Haven. Uh, I'm trying to remember his name because he passed away. It's been so, so long. He was familiar with all these movies. We played, the Spades played in the education of Sonny Carson. One of the reasons why they took us out of the education of Sonny Carson is because we went to Brooklyn and we had to fight with the Tomahawk and the Jolly Stompers, who now we have a, a, a good brotherhood with. But that's back then. That's not today. And they tried to get us into the, uh, they tried to get us into the Warriors. But the 17th Division of Black Spades was out of the South Bronx, and they tried to get us into the Warriors. The 17th was a mean division. And every time, we, and when we went down there, it just didn't work out. 
because mm. we didn't like the concept of, of that they was picking white boys. Mm. You understand to 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 lead gangs because we were fighting white boys. And how are you going to take a, 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 a couple of blacks and white gangs to move through the Bronx? Come on, no. So we we didn't get a chance to play in it. But but uh, the Warriors to us was like a concept of uh, coming from us moving through the Bronx, fighting. You understand, surviving. But like I said, we had a chance to play in that movie, but we didn't because uh, we just didn't like how the people that they had to portray us. So many of these movies, gangs in New York and all these movies, they want to betray all these white gangs. I know it goes back in history, but 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 where where are we? Mm. You understand? They always want to put us at the bottom. They don't never want want to reveal that a lot of these gangs were not were not here to create a chaos and all this. We came into existence. And we, we changed it. We changed the existence of where we, where we was going and where we coming, where we came from and where we going. But we didn't come into this, you understand, to be a terror and, and to cause havoc. You understand? We came in this to protect our communities. And as far as the Warriors is concerned, we Mr. Bailey, his name is Mr. Bailey. He was from the South, from Patterson Projects. He played in a lot of movies. Uh, 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 school uh, school days, a lot of movies, and he got us into some some movies, and we just didn't like the concept of, of the Warriors. Mm. That was it. Okay. Uh, now, it sounds to me, brother Tiny, that the Spades came into existence, and many of the the gangs or street organizations because of like like white gangs in back in the 1800s and Asian gangs and poverty, overcrowded conditions, people trying to eat, people needing protection to travel. You go in here and some ethnic group is beating you up. And it, it sounds like you were kind of born from the conditions around you. Then you had the civil rights movement, the black power, all this stuff going on. It sounds well, like. You know, go ahead, my brother. Well, you know that's that's what our founders brought the spades into an existence for. But let me try to clear up something. You had a lot of white gangs as well, and they wasn't living in 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 our areas. They came out of good areas, but they were gangs. They they came together to stop us. They came mm. together because they didn't want us in their schools. They came together because they didn't want us to walk walk on their streets. Do you understand? I, I live in a co-op city now, section of the Bronx. There was a time we couldn't walk up here, Pelham Bay area. We couldn't walk on Fordham Road. We had to fight wow. these gangs. And the only difference, the difference between the white gangs and us is that they had the police. So instead of us fighting boys, on teenagers like us, we were fighting men, and they had more protection than us because they were protected by the police, who didn't care nothing about us as well. I don't want to sit here and be a racist, but it is what it is. Because today we're doing bigger and better things, and we're trying to work with everybody. But like I say, there were a lot of gangs, and and not because we came out of a poverty stricken areas. No, yes, we lived in these places. You understand? We 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 was, we we lived in these places and these places where they wanted us to be. But I want everybody to understand there was gangs everywhere, even in the Pelham section of the Bronx where we couldn't walk. There was a lot of white gangs, and they were doing some of the craziest things we did. We had gangs that came into Soundview. We had gangs that came off white gangs that came off Fort Road. We had white gangs. You understand that that will come down the concourse. They challenged us like we challenged them. But you see, when we chased them and we got to a certain part of town, we couldn't go in because then the police and, and, and even on Fordham Road, when we we got into a big fight one time on Fordham Road, but then we started fighting with the police. So it's not like because we come out of poverty. It's not like because we come out of these, well, they more like they say ghetto street neighborhoods that we got gangs. Yes, we got a lot of things going on, but. People got to understand, gangs are everywhere. 
It's just mm. how they're being dealt with and, 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 and the conditions that they live in. Some people, you understand, live in houses, and when they finish, they go close the door. We we going back into projects, so we going to tenement buildings. You understand? Our neighborhoods just don't look like their neighborhoods. You understand? So so they want to label us, and I hate the labels. You understand? I hate the labels because mm. a lot of us, you understand, are intelligent, bright. You understand? A lot of spades have moved on to college. You understand? A lot of spades have moved on and done a lot of great things. So, it, 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 you know, it's who you are and where you come from, you know. Well, man, listen, I I appreciate that clarification. Who better to, to clear it up than you? <laughs> right. <laughs> so that's why I'm going to the source. You know, there's yeah. a lot of we we are um those of us who didn't have that experience are ignorant about a lot of things, you know. So mm -hmm. we have to come to you to, to get that type of clarification. And that's why. I'm excited about this show. And you know, our organization, Harlem Liberation School, had a panel. We had you and a whole bunch of different people up. And that was one of the best panel discussions we did because it was so much information that the community just didn't know until we heard y'all break it down. Mm -hmm. So I really appreciate that. Um, we actually answered this already, but it's important. I think some people, Brother Tiny, maybe they've been living under a rock. I don't know. <laughs> What what the issue is? They hear gang or street organization, and they automatically oh that's blacks and Latinos. And I want you to give just if you could summarize people a sense of why that is wrong to think that way. That's because you understand they don't want to go into the white communities. You understand they 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 want to call the black communities, Hispanic communities, drug infested, uh, 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 rat infested. But let me explain something to you. We had we had the Golden Guineas, the Fordham Bullies, a, a, a whole bunch of I can't get all their names right now. A whole bunch of white gangs. I don't know where they live because I didn't live in the neighborhood. But we had a lot of gangs that was back back then who was trying to prevent us from going to our schools, our high school, Roosevelt, Evander, or, 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 or Lehman. You understand? They didn't want us in their neighborhoods. But right now we dominate these neighborhoods, but they didn't want us in these neighborhoods. And a lot of people don't know that there was a whole lot of white gangs. I'm not gonna say that the white gangs had more than we had, but they had those areas and there was a lot of white gangs. There was a lot of uh, 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 chaos going on. But you know, so the, the, and, and between the Latin and black gangs, everybody had to have their own identity. The, the, the Latino gangs, you understand, they came together and they made they, 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 their own identity of what they wanted to be, just like the black space where we wanted to be. But I want people to understand, black space did not discriminate. We had Puerto Ricans. We had whites. You understand? The only thing I don't think we had was Mexicans, but we had Chinese. Mount Haven section of the Bronx, like I said before, we, we had a Chinese family down there and they wore black spade colors. We always had black space was always multiracial. We always had space, and you and you would find out that a lot of these brothers in these neighborhoods, they they they, they came under the space. Some of them came under the space because they lived in the neighborhood. Some of them came under the space because they was fascinated about what we was doing. But um, that's a myth, and people need to wake up because if they came today, a lot of people walk around freely. They go different places. There's still places in Pelham Bay today we can't go into that the, mm. the blacks can't walk to. And, and mm. a lot of people don't know that. There's still places up here in Pelham Bay that we can't walk to. They don't want us walking through their communities. But it's not as much as it was during the 70s and 80s where the gangs had to come up here and fight. Now you got the projects and the projects is dominated. And that's how they say that we dominated with the white and the Latino brothers. You understand? And they want to call us, you understand, or, or gangs and drug dealers. And, and and the game has changed. Nowadays, the brothers are more, the brothers are more on the street doing street things than they did before. A lot of brothers don't care about the neighborhood. They care about what they can get their hands on and, and how much money they can make. We did not, Black Space did not, did, did, did not focus on what we can do. The Black Space did not focus on how much money we can get. We focused on the people in our neighborhoods. And let me tell you something, the parents, 
Back then when we had these tenant associations, they were happy to come out and know that we was on these streets doing what we do because we kept our neighborhood safe. Wow. Um, Tiny, I don't know if you're going to remember this, man, but when Harlem Liberation School did our panel discussion, you made this point, and I was like, whoa. It, it, it demonstrated how powerful you guys were. I, you said something to the effect of something had happened in the projects where you lived and that the police came running, knocking to your door. <laughs> Half out of breath, yeah. like... Is Tiny home? Yo, could he stop this? We <laughs> something like that. Could you could you break that down? Well, you know, back in the days, I'm telling you, it's I, I don't want to compare yesterday to the day, but yesterday was a whole new different day from today. Back then we had community police policing. And let me tell you something. God bless my mother. They used to knock on my door looking for me all the time. My mother would invite them in and give them something to eat, give them a chicken sandwich or whatever she was cooking. And and and, and there's a lot of times they knocked on my door because I was the president of the 14th division or uh, before I became spokesman, I was president of the 14th in Mount Haven. So anything that took, see anything that took place back in them days and the police know who, who was involved. So they would come to those people. They didn't come kicking. They didn't come knocking down doors. They would knock on my door and say, listen, it's tiny. Here. Come, come We need to talk to them. My mother would invite them in. They would talk in front of my mother. And they say, listen, we need to get this stopped, or we need, or you, or we need to do this. It's not about me going to them and, and turning our people in, because we never did that. It was you never, never turn against your people. But if you could stop something, we would. And, and, and see the police back then, they knew, they knew who was the fighters, they knew who was the protectors. They knew who was the troublemakers. We didn't have a lot of people uh, drinking and smoking like we have today. So, you know, and, and they knew when something took place in, in, in our neighborhood, they knew who it was because they knew who dominated. We dominated. Now, today, they don't know what's going on. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. They know what's going on. They're following everybody through social media and all this other good stuff. But we had community policing. We had much more programs going on. You understand? So when they knocked on my door, my mother would welcome them in. And, and and I'm telling you, they came in, they spoke to me, said, listen, we need you to help us. We need you to get this going. One time they came and got me on uh, uh, the police athletic lodge, PAL. They brought me into the PAL. They said, we need you to speak to some kids. They need you. So, it, you know, it, they we spoke. They came to us to stop to stop things, or, or, or if there was robberies going on in the project, if somebody got robbed, they would come and say, "Listen, man, you y'all need to stop this." So it was a thing where they knew who was in the projects and who who dominated the projects, and they did. They came, knocked on my door, and say, "Tiny, listen, we need we need you understand to see if you can stop this and stuff." And we go out and talk to the brothers, and we say, "Listen, man." We don't turn nobody in, but we tell them right straight up. Y'all need to stop this, man, because you're bringing heat in the projects or you're doing this. And a lot of brothers stopped. A lot of brothers didn't. They took their chances with the jail. But a lot of brothers would stop because we would stop it because we knew what it meant to protect our neighborhood. We knew that when, when our mothers sat on the bench, we didn't have a lot of that stuff going on that's going on today. And, and, our, and, our, and our children played. Our children played and our children had fun. Yes, we had things that happened in the projects. We wasn't all goody two shoes. Yes, there was shootouts. There was this, but it wasn't every day or every every once a week. Or I mean, it was like a every six or seven month thing if something happened. So the police did knock on my door and then they came. They came to talk to me to see if I could help them stop this. Stuff. Not for me to tell on nobody. Right, not for right. me to, to this, but 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 to, but to see if we can curve what was going on at that time. Yeah, man. Listen, when you told a story, I never took it from the perspective of you was a snitch. I took it more like, mm. wow, that means they're wielding a lot of power for the police that we come there like, yo, we can't do nothing with this. Can you help us? Can you help chill us out? I think that that demonstrates a lot of power. You know, that's how I see it. Um, mm. I think it's interesting that, you know, you know, Tiny, my politics are probably a little more radical and mm -hmm. controversial um but i think it's interesting that uh 
the 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 influence of the Stokely Carmichael, the Asada Shakur, the Black Panther Party, the Nation of Islam. It's amazing that when I think about how a lot of these groups formed, or at least the black ones, that they were influenced by a lot of the people and the organizations of that time. I heard even in the West Coast that that's how it happened. And these people, because it's kind of like the Panthers were a lot of the kind of the uncles or big brothers of some of these people. A lot of them were locked up. A lot of them were killed. Some of them, unfortunately, fell out to drugs or whatever. And this younger group of guys kind of, in some ways, took the, the baton from their uncles and their cousins and tried to take a little bit of what they were saying and a little bit of what they saw and put it together and try to create something. And it seems like it was for survival is what I'm getting from you. You're saying that we we couldn't go to Jerome Avenue without fighting. So we had to right, get some people to make sure that we had protection. But I heard that some of the organizations, Brother Tiny, would even rob trucks and give that stuff to the people in their project. Is that, is that true, too? Well, you know what, though? I've never been involved with that, and I don't know any brothers that did that. And it might be because, you know, back then, uh, 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 we didn't rob things. Don't get me wrong. You had brothers that did things on the side that, that I, I still today, I can't tell you what they did. We right, were not right. really cool shoes, but we wasn't in that. And, 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 and I remember one time we went, it was called E&B on 143rd. We um Something happened to a couple of uh, a couple of these uh, 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 in our building, our neighbors. And we went in there and we just loaded the cards up and we brought the food out and gave it to them. You understand? We just mm -hmm. gave it to them. Now, the manager wanted to get us arrested, who, who was a manager of E&B. That's what it was called at that time, E&B. But when he came over to the project and see that we wasn't doing something for our self-interest, that we was doing it for the people. Let me tell you something. Because he, he called the police. He stopped the police. We we tried to do things to help our community. Yes, we also tore up our community when we had to. Yeah, there's times we had to fight in our community. But we basically tried to help our community. We basically tried to give back. We tried, you know, and, and I look at today and I look at yesterday. The difference between today and yesterday is that our brothers, is, our brothers, the brothers today are not the brothers of yesterday. Everything progress. Our, our, our brothers today are warriors and fighters, but I, sometimes I think they use that energy to put it in the wrong area because they're taking life. They're not preserving life. And they're killing our kids and they're, 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 our women are being assaulted. Our elders, and you understand, our elders are being beat up. I think, they, I think each block, each area, and we talk right now, I have a program, and we go out and we talk to a lot of different people about how they can have to their neighborhood, because I think we have to start with the neighborhoods. You understand? We have to start with the neighborhoods, and you got to go to the people that's, I'm sorry, those brothers out there making money, I don't dislike them. I love them, because those are going to be the brothers that's going to stand up and do the right thing. A lot will, a lot won't. But we you understand? Drugs have been in our neighborhoods for years. I'm not saying we're going to control it, but I'm saying, listen, man, we got to do something to where we preserve life. Our kids are dying. How do we stop, you know, help our kids? How, you know, and how do we, you know, and 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 and, and how do we help help our sisters? Right now, our sister could get beat up in front of us and we walk away. And, am I mad? Yes, I'm mad. But I do understand some things, not that I'm saying, not say, I, I'm, I won't tell you what I'm going to do until I do it. Because let me tell you something. I've watched... I've watched things on TVs and we always say, if we was there, what are we going to do? We don't know what we're going to do until we, until we stand right there in no shoes and watch it. I can't see, no, I got six sisters. I can't see no man touching my sister, even today. And they all past 50 and I can't mm -hmm. see no man hurting a woman, but we, we got to get back that concept that we, that we got to protect our neighborhoods. So, you know, we are, Back, you know, we back in the days we 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 did we did everything for our community. We tore it up and we helped it, but we basically tried to help it more because and the people in our neighborhoods actually quite as is kept. They were mad when we wasn't around. Where's Tiny in them? Where's Tiny in them? Because they knew that we was going to protect. 
You understand our neighborhood. And that's what it needs to be today. The, the, the community, the neighborhood needs to know that these brothers and sisters are going to be out there to help them. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Agreed, good brother. And we we um we touched on this a little bit. I want to just go into this a little bit. I was really uh fascinated with this idea of discipline as a, as a person that's teaching community organizations how to be better leaders and have better more effective organizations one of the things that i always talk about is protocol that that every every organization that's really worthy of being called an organization has a code you know it could be written it could be unwritten but it's a code and not just the code they have a policy a, a, a disciplinary piece to that code what happens when this is violated and you show me well, an organization doesn't have protocol i show you an organization that's weak and i noticed that well, the I gangs and yes go ahead brother no go ahead go ahead go ahead, go ahead and finish go ahead oh no i was just gonna say i noticed that the street organizations were very clear on protocol and even with your leadership could you give people a sense of the hierarchy i know there was warlords could you give people like the different sort of categories of leadership and your discipline so they can understand well, you know, back in you know, we had we had a strong leadership. Like I said, we was over we was over forty thousand strong in the city of New York and the Bronx. And let me tell you something: discipline was our key because if we if we didn't have discipline, then the black space would be in chaos. We would be all over the place, and this discipline was enforced. If we if we made if we if we made if we made peace with a certain organization, we would make sure that every every division of the space, Brooklyn, Bronx, Queens, Staten Island, wherever they was at, yo, we got we got peace with this organization, and and and, and no one is to break that peace. Now, what the other gangs did, we don't know. So if they so if they came against us then our people would retaliate that's what you do but we would make sure that we would not break this peace because it was very important for discipline and structure because when you have that many people you cannot have chaos and you cannot have individuals running around doing what they want to do or what they feel and that's what's happening today our young brothers and sisters don't have leadership structure now you might have those that do i'm not gonna say they all don't there's a lot of brothers that have leadership but then again they, there's a lot of brothers that don't they have renegades because everybody want to be on their own you understand that everybody want to be independent and everybody want to be their own boss you, you you all come out the same building you got five brothers come out the same building and you all belong to something different but how could you belong to some, something different and you live in the same building which 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 you can but now you got chaos amongst yourself in the same building. See, and this is why it was very important. We had president, vice president. We had warlords. We had two warlords. We had a spokesman. We had a treasurer. My, when I became president, before I was a president, before I was a president, I was just a member. Then I became president of chapter one of the 14th division of Mount Haven. Then after that, I became spokesman. I became supreme spokesman throughout the whole South Bronx when the 17th division was given the leadership role. As the space was so large that Monk had to split this, split this up. So he gave he gave Coke, rest his soul, he's passed. He gave Coke supreme power to South Bronx. This is how powerful and not as powerful. But this is how large the members were. He, he he couldn't control everything up. Monk couldn't control everything up there in Bronx River. So he had to put leadership. And between him and Coke, those two leaders, Supreme Presidents, they kept they kept everything in check. And, and, and they stayed on top of everything. So leadership was very, very, very important. And if we had loose cannons, we dealt with it. And you wouldn't be, you ain't gonna like the way we dealt with loose cannons because you would not put no one else's life in jeopardy because you ain't had nothing else to do. We wasn't mm -hmm. going for that. Now I'm not, you, you, you know, and, and, and there's people who's left and, and, and went out and caused chaos and we still tore them up. 
because they knew the they knew the policy, they knew the laws, and 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 and, and people knew who you was. So before you got a chance to leave us alone, they all knew who you were. So now you somewhere else causing chaos and they think you still a part of us. Leadership was important. And 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 and, and structure, structure and leadership was one of the main things that the space had. Mm. You know, I, I found it interesting, Brother Tiny, uh, checking out some of your bio, doing my little bit of research that uh heard you was good with that. I heard you was pretty good with these. Well, back but in the I days. Also, but I also heard that you was good with this and that you were I, actually I, a spokesman in many respects, somebody that, that, that might go out and speak to another organization. Is that true? Well, I've never been a fighter. I've been a brawler. Because, listen, when we start to fight, I get in it. Scratch, kick, bite, whatever. And I, listen, when I get in, I go in. I, and listen, when I get in, I get in. I, I've never been a Mike Tyson or one of those boxers where you stand up there and box all day long. I've never been that good. But I've been a brawler. I, You know, when I was younger, I took judo. But I've always been a brawler. But my, but my number one... My number one defense for me was speaking. I come from a mother of nine, six girls and four, six girls and three boys. Didn't have a father, and my mother, she raised us all by herself. And she she wasn't a smart woman, but she raised us. You know, listen, she raised us so good that I didn't know we were poor until I became eighteen when I got off her budget. Then I realized I was on welfare, and she taught me that there was nothing more important than family and your neighborhood. Mm. I, I had a godmother, her name Go was ahead, Marion. Mama. I had a godmother, her name was Marion Rose. She was a district leader. I was I was always talking. Rose would, Miss Rose would always have me talk in different places. Uh, Jose Serrano, we used to talk for them when we was in the gang. We talked, we talked. So my thing was, my mother taught me that the pin was more mightier than the sword. And she said, you only resort to the sword when people leave you no options. Now, I did what I had to do. Been locked up a number of times. I, I, I mean, I'm no angel. I did what I had to do. But I prefer to speak. Even today, I prefer to reach out and speak. Because like I said, I believe that the, the pen is way mightier than the sword. Mm. And, and so... In line with that, what you're saying, the gangs also had a a, a role. I don't know if it was an ambassador, but they had a, a person that was assigned to kind of talk peace, right, and negotiate peace with other groups. Is that right? Oh yes. As spokesman, one of my it's funny because one of you know when you look at the UN downtown, the gangs were like the UN. You know, and, and people talk about they don't have skills. You'd be imagine of the skills that they have selling drugs. You understand accountants and this and that. Uh, 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 uh. I, I was a spokesman. One of my jobs was to go in different neighborhoods and, and, and establish peace or establish war. I would go into a neighborhood and I would bring my, my, my two warlords with me and their jobs were just to be there with me. And we would come back, report to our president, What's going on? Well, yo, they want to fight or they don't this or we can't get nothing out of them. But and, and, and that's what it was. Up. But my job was to was to establish peace. And that's what we tried to do. And when we couldn't, we fought. We fought. I mean, there's, I mean, you know, I can't sit here and say that 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 I didn't want to. Of course, I didn't want to. But I had to. Sometimes I, sometimes I had to put down the pen and pick up the sword and go do what you had to do. You understand? But uh. We tried to establish peace as much as we could. And when it and when, when time came, you couldn't establish peace. It was all, and it wasn't like today. Or, or if, if, if you was in Mount Haven Projects, it was all one gang. Today, 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 2021, in Mount Haven, there's like 25 different people. Mm -hmm. So you can't control 25 different people because everybody have a different mindset and everybody have a different way of getting money or, or doing what they want to do. But in, back in my days, one gang, one area. One mm. gang, one area. All right. Now, I I heard that if you wore your, I don't know how you refer, cuts, 
uh, patches at colors. That that was a very important. Could you explain to people the importance of your of it, that? It, one of the rules that we had, and it was a rule that was enforced, and I mean it was enforced on any or whichever way it had to be enforced. You don't go to another gang neighborhood and turn your colors. If they tell you to turn your colors, you don't turn your colors. You don't give your jackets to nobody. And and and, and I think 1970, 1972, I got shot because I was in Harlem and I refused to give my jacket up. I, you know, and, and it's it's like we had that rule. If you gave your jacket up, those are those are our patches. We had in our clubhouse, we had all kind of jackets on our wall. We will not not ever give our pat well i'm gonna say patches our jackets our jackets up our jackets were our bible this were our bible and we wouldn't give them up and that was that was a rule and if you gave them up i'm not gonna lie to you if we found out you gave your jacket up you came back in the neighborhood and you ain't have no scratches on you and you and we found out you gave it up i'm just gonna leave it like that right understood brother understood you know, it almost it almost sounds, brother Tiny, like the different gangs saw themselves almost like nations. We like, were almost we, like we're a, this is our nation, this is our territory, this is our flag, right? These are our ambassadors. It sounds like almost like a like they saw themselves as nations. Is that is that accurate? If you had to, if you back in the days, if you had to put gangs under an umbrella, I would compare them to the. Even though we was here in the Bronx, you would it was one nation inside of a nation. Okay. We wasn't one nation, but we were we were different gangs inside of a nation, inside of the Bronx, because we you know, we 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 had to exist, we had to fight, we had to we we had to build, we had to destroy, but the bottom line, we had to live within this Bronx. We were a nation. Inside of a nation, the spades was a nation inside of the nation, the skulls, the reapers, all of these brothers, you understand, these, these, these different organizations, street organizations were a nation inside, and I'm going to say a nation, but inside the Bronx, Manhattan, if they lived in Manhattan, if they lived in Brooklyn, but we were a nation inside of the Bronx. And like I said, you had over, over 100 street gangs in the Bronx. So they and and, and 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 this is where the peace treaty came in, where they all had to survive and live. Not everybody lived up to the peace treaty. There was a lot of lot of fighting going on. And back then, our fighting was we were hand to hand, close up, bat sticks. You understand? I think the highest gun we had was a zip gun back then. You understand? Mm -hmm. Or a twenty two. But we fought with our hands. We fought with bat sticks, chains. So back then. You had to be a gladiator because it was time to go to gladiator school. You understand it when it was time to fight because you couldn't run and you had to stand there. So I would say to you, we were, and I'll use the Bronx, we were a nation inside of a nation. All the gangs that exist within the Bronx. Mm. That's very interesting. You know, something that you you said touches on something that I believe and, and teach strongly. I teach it from the perspective of leadership. Uh, that leaders for black people have to, we have to be able to trust them, to depend on them, to know that they're not lying, they're not stealing our money, they're not trying to get with our wife and whatever else, integrity, and that leaders have to be tested and tried. I hear a lot of people on the internet and on the social, and they talking this, and they talking, I'm like, yeah, okay. What, what organization did you lead? What struggle did you fight? What did you win? That's what I want to know. I want references, brother. I want resumes. I want, I want to see job experience because people can say talk all types of talk. But I want to know what have you done. Now, you know what? gangs had a way of testing and trying people to make sure. Could you get into that? Well, you know what though. If you wanted to, I'm a, okay. I'm gonna use it like this. If you when we test people, if you wanted to join the spades, how you was tested was you was tested through. Your loyalty, we, and we don't know your loyalty until it's being shown. How, how did you? How did you fight? Did you come to every meeting? See, you just couldn't join this page. 
Space, I'm gonna tell you something. Space, I, I, space had a million people, but you know, out of that million people, maybe only fifty thousand was the warriors. Okay, because in every gang, you got a you got a, a whole bunch of people, but there's only a few that fight. We and and I'm not gonna say we didn't have it, but most our people was t myself. When I joined the gang, I used to run because I was scared of my mama. Because my mama, she didn't play that, so I used to run. Then one day they finally caught me, and I had to go tell my mom. I said, listen, Bob, I'm in the gang. I had this. But at that time, they was fighting in the neighborhood. I could explain these things to her. She understood. But as time went on, she didn't understood. But it was nothing she could do because I was in I was in position where I was leading people. And let me tell you something. It's like when you're having your meetings, when you're going out to rumbles. We, I mean, you, the, the, you, we watch. Do you want to you join me? We watch you. Where your heart is at. What you're doing. You understand? Because anybody could join, but not everybody has the heart to join. And you got to remember, even today, a lot of people join organizations, join different uh, groups, you understand, because of the numbers or because they're in the neighborhood. They don't join because they want to. A lot of people join the space, not because they want to, but learn to, to adapt to the laws because it was part of their neighborhood. Oh, I ain't going to lie to you. We brought brothers in. And and, and 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 we didn't and we didn't trust everybody, but as as we brought brothers in and they proved themselves, because loyalty is one thing, a gang fight is another. Right. And when I'm with me and you together and we stand and <laughs> toe to toe, then I know damn well you with me. But if I mean, if about. I'm in the gang fight and I see you down the block, I know you ain't with me. <laughs> you know he is converse running in the opposite direction. <laughs> And a lot of and a lot of time, my presidents before I became presidents, I learned from them. Put the new people in the front, not as victims, not as shields, but because let's see what they're going to do. That's right. And there was times that new people ran, but there was a lot of times new people stood up and fought hard. Because see, if the new people was in the front and the people was in the back of them, we know where we going. We going to we going into that war, but we want to see what the new people are going to do. So, you know, it, 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 you was tested. And a lot of times, a lot of our brothers, a lot of our brothers and sisters came out on top. Mm. Yeah, because I, I know um, one of the, 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 the key movies that is recommended viewing, I know son, is the education, of, the miseducation of Sonny Carson, the education of Sonny Carson. And they show how he had to run the gauntlet. And then he go through that soul train line, but it wasn't no dancing going on. Sonny <laughs> Carson. <laughs> we was we was in we were in the education of Sonny Carson. We we were in there for like a we was in there for like a month, but they took us out the movie. A, a personal friend of mine, his name is Bo. He's still alive today. He had one of the major roles in the education of Sonny Carson. One of the reasons why we they took us out because at that time we had to go to Brooklyn, and of course you know the Jolly Stompers and and and, and the Tomahawks were the most. They, most of them were spades, but now they're jolly stoppers and tomahawks. They, you know, and, and and they were powerful out there, and they didn't like us, so we didn't get along with them, and we fought them. So and instead of the movie company losing and their the equipment was getting tore up, they got rid of us. And we got paid, but that's not the point. I, today, I don't look at it as the point of getting paid. I wish we could have stayed in there because I had two or three speaking roles. You understand, and, and we 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 watch most of that, and, and and some of it was good, some of it, you know, and I think Sonny Carson did a good job, but uh, I wish we could have kept our role, but see, the spades don't take, we don't take no mess, and not saying that we can't be beat because we're not gonna be beat, but the bottom line is that when we had to go on their territory, we went out there being dominated. I don't care whether we was in the Bronx, Brooklyn, or Queens, we dominate everywhere we go especially the 17th Division of Spades, we dominate everywhere we go or whatever happens. Mm. Okay. Now, something that I think is interesting, I don't know if a lot of people know this, and I think we're, we're uh, getting, we're coming now to the conclusion of the show. I know Tiny's a busy brother. I'm got stuff to do, but this is very important. If you were going to list some of the important achievements accomplishments of the black space that people don't know about what would you say 
Well, you know, today, today, I have two organizations. I have Black Spade Security Services, which we're putting in, which we're putting in place as a legal security company, and I also have TBS New Direction, which is a mental, which is a mental um, program, which is a five hundred one three C. You know, today, what I'm trying to do is establish what our founders tried to do. What our founders tried to do, you understand, was not about gang activities, was not about war, was not about hate. Yes, we had to fight the white gangs and for it seemed like it's hate, but we, what we did, what we had to do to try to protect our neighborhood. I wasn't there when it first started. I came in in 70. This just started in 1968, 69. But today I'm trying to bring life back to the spades. We took, we took, we took, we took. Now I'm trying to give. We have a lot of organizations out there to cure violence programs. They doing their good things, but I'm going a different and a separate way. I'm going with public safety. Before this violence started, we we were moving around the Bronx, Manhattan, where we go into different communities, community centers, different churches, and we bring in the police. We bring in uh, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the politicians from that neighborhood. We bring in the, the, the church because you'd be surprised. The church used to be the first line of defense for black people. It ain't the first line of defense no more. Everything is about money. I can't say anything about it because if you ain't got none, you're not important. And so everybody wants to everybody wants to put money over lives. Right now, I'm trying to put lives over lives. And the virus has struck us down because for the last three years, I've been doing public safety meetings throughout the Bronx. And it's it's kind of rough right now because with all everything going on, everything going on. See, our kids today, I'm not against them. I'm not for everything they do, but I am for them because the kids of the day are the ones that's making as making headway and 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 it, but but they got to learn how to make a headway with positive energy not with all this destructiveness because i don't think they understand when they tear up their neighborhoods they tear it up for where their grandmothers their mothers their sisters and brothers got to go way across town a lot of them don't have cars and not only do not only that this is where they live but our brothers and sisters today are doing a, 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 i believe in them only if they stop this destruction amongst each other. And, and and we go out, and I want everybody to understand the concept of what the spades were supposed to be. And this is why TBS New Direction, you understand, I'm constantly on Facebook. I'm constantly doing things. We're doing everything. I done went back to school, and I lead by example. I went back to school. I got my bachelor's degree in 2015. I'm working on my master's degree. You understand? So I'm leading by example on what we need to do. I'm not saying what I do is the best thing in the world because a lot of these, a lot of these things I should have done as a young child. But as long as God keep me alive, I'm going to do it. And that's what we're trying to teach our kids. We're trying to teach our kids, don't get to my age and want to start Storing a star creating life because I got arthritis and I got all kind of things holding me down. But do it while you're young. Do it while you're young if you can and, and, and live a productive, you know, life. And, and there's a lot of things going against us, but there's a lot of things that can go for us if we try. And I don't want to hear, oh, life, oh, I'm black. I can't do this. I can't do that. I mean, there's a lot of things we could do. And as And as a former gang member, I've been arrested 21 times. I've been upstate twice. I sold drugs. I took drugs. So I know, I know what we can do and what we can't do. You understand? And, and, and this is what we're trying to teach now. I'm trying to bring back the concept of what the spades trying to do. And we're doing it well so far. We're doing it quite well. Mm. That's what I hear, brother Tiny. Every anytime I ask about you and the spades, and is and and to be fair, uh, family, those of you watching and listening, uh, the spades was certainly the largest of the of the, the street organizations coming out the Bronx in New York, but there were also other street organizations, and like the spades, some of the other organizations, the people got older, they got wiser, they got more mature, they went through things, and they said, you know what, there's a better way we could do this, and they reached back to the younger people. And they're doing some really strong work. You know, you got the peacemakers, right? And 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 different organizations that I respect. I see that they're out there 
raising money, canned food drives, uh, books, getting books for the kids, you know, really good work, just like the spades, man. And um, it's just interesting that we come full circle. I was more of a stoop kid, Brother Tiny, highly mm -hmm. regulated and regimented, <laughs> went to school, <laughs> went to Sunday school, <laughs> but went to college, did that, did organizing. You went a different way, but look, we come to the same place, though. Yes, At yes, the sir. end of the day, we're in the same place, man. That's right. That's right. right? Because trying to help our people, man, trying to be models and trying to show good. And that, that's a beautiful thing right there. Well, you know, we, we, we're helping our people on different levels. There's, there's going to be different people, different levels of how we help our communities. And we just, you know, and we, we're all not going to come together. But as long as we use the word help, as long as you understand we, we, we keep our people in mind, we do what we're going to do. Because sometimes we're walking down the same road, but we got to hit that road from different avenues. And I've learned that. And, and this is what we're doing. Uh, you know, when I first started in 2013, I couldn't get nobody to open their door to me. Oh, we ain't talking to no gang member. Oh, no, I don't want no gang member. Now, I got, let me tell you something. I got I got the churches. I got the police department, 1PP, 1PD, all these places opening their doors to me. I don't accept no fundings from nobody. I just got my 5013C. But we've been doing this on our own because I don't want nobody to dictate to me how we have to work. Mm. But you know, I'm not going to stay in lie to you. I need money. I need money because anybody who thinks that they can be out on these streets and do this work without funding, they're crazy. For we sure. all need funding. You understand? We need funding to keep <laughs> ourselves alive. We need funding to get Metro cards for our people. We, I <laughs> mean, we, you know, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, listen, half of my group is just as old as I am, but we need, we need money to travel, to go to these places and do things. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to take a new turn on how to do things, but I'm going to keep my perspective my way because I can't help everybody, but we damn sure going to try. And like I said, brother, I, I appreciate you having me on the show. And I just believe that we got to go one block at a time, one project at a time. We got, we just can't, I can't come out 143rd Street thinking I know about 142nd Street. I should stay on 143rd where I live and, and build my block and let 142nd build their block. Every time I turn around, we got people coming together for this and that. You know, the Black Lives Movement is a beautiful thing, but I still say we need to see the Black Lives Movement. We also need to be moving this movement of saving lives with our children. I, I'm down with I will fight against the police every day when it's called for, but I also want us to fight against the crimes that's in our streets mm -hmm. because our kids are dying, our women are being abused, our elderly are being hurt. Now, come on, we we, we got to do something. And I call on all the OGs. I call on the OGs that God has allowed to live to come out. If you got the legs, come on out because everybody's not going to hear us. But if you can get one person you know, I believe in that concept. If you can get one person, then maybe you can save a life. And we need to be out there and we need to be talking to our kids because our politicians, listen, like you said earlier, I'm not crazy about our politicians because our people have to learn how to vote them in and vote them out. We put you in there and you don't do what you're supposed to do, then bring them out. But see, our people, we put them in there and then we leave them there. Right. We got to learn to, we got to, learn to put them in, take them out. And if we got to keep doing it over and over, then that's so to be. Because right now, out, out, the generation today don't believe in the politicians, don't believe in the churches. They don't believe in anything but the streets and money. And, and, and we got to help them because there's much more to life than money and the street. And we got to give them something to value and something to believe in, especially themselves. So this is what TBS New Direction is doing. TBS New Direction. TBS stands for the Black Spades. New Direction. And that's what we're doing now. Now, Tiny, if somebody wants, they hearing what you're saying, they feeling you, and they want to join or they want to support, how do they reach TBS New Direction? Well, they can call me at 347-951-0931 and they can, they can email me at my email, Marion dot frampton at gmail.com and let me tell you something we got a lot of brothers coming home from prison 
I'm taking a lot of brothers. We don't have no money, but I let everybody understand. If you want to do this work, if you want to volunteer, we don't have money one day because I ain't going to be a poor man all my life. But we got to get up in here. We got to get up in here. We just got to show these people that we mean business. You know, mm -hmm. and like I said, the Cure Violence programs, they're doing their thing. But I don't want to go that way. I want to go the way of public safety because public safety is bringing people together, not just the gangs, but the churches, the, uh, uh, the police department. We got a lot of friction going on and we got to bring people together. And, and, and I will I will stand with the police department and I'll fight against the police department if I have to. But the thing is, we got to bring people together because I'm about bringing people together no matter what their race is. And, you know, and it's not a black thing. It's a people thing. And don't get me wrong, as a black man, I got to stand up and fight for my, fight for my people first. You understand? Fight for my people to be, you understand, independent and stuff. But but together, you understand, Brother Ty, we, we just bring people together and do what we got to do. All right. Now, Brother Tiny, I want to make sure that I have the information right and exact about the number. So... Give me that TBS new direction. I don't want us to leave without putting this up. Okay. Mm -hmm. Give me that number again, Brother Tiny. 347 951 0931. Okay. And my email is marion.frampton at gmail.com. Marion. Dot Frampton. Dot Frampton at gmail dot at gmail gmail dot com. Okay, let me make sure I got that right. I'm gonna put that up now. Okay. People, y'all trying to hit my brother up. His formal name is Marion. We know him in the hood uh as brother Tiny. You hit him up at three. Don't come with no foolishness. The brother wants workers. He That's wants it. workers and thinkers. Yeah. All right, don't come with no foolishness. He's ready to get to work. And brother, Three, four, brother six, let, me, let me explain something too. We right now the Black Spades is giving out food once a month throughout the Bronx. We take food. We dealing with the tenant associations. We dealing with the churches. But we pick one place a month to take out food. Five hundred boxes of food for a month. So anybody who's wanting, and we get speak. You know, we do a speaking engagements. Anybody who wants to do something to help their community, to help themselves by helping yourselves, sometimes it's helping your community. I'm, 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 I'm I'll, I'll take you on. I'm, I'm willing to take you on. But if you ain't willing to do nothing, and you're gonna say, "Oh, I can't make it today, and I gotta stay home," then stay home because we need people with boots on the ground. There it is, family. Hit our good brother Marion, also known as Tiny, up at three four seven nine five one. 0931. The brother ain't trying to get no dates and no special dinners, sisters. All right. The brother, <laughs> the brother, <laughs> this is for work. <laughs> listen, All right. Listen. They better know I got my wife for 35 That's years. Right. That's they right. They want to take that. over of us. <laughs> <laughs> she, she ain't playing that. And also, you can hit our good brother up uh, and on uh, email at marion.frampton at gmail.com. We got both things posted right on the screen there. We're going to leave that up as we go out. Listen, Brother Tiny, man, much respect and love for you, brother, as brother, always. Listen, I thank you very much for having me. And and also, before we leave, uh, the end of this month, the documentary of the Black Spades from the 70s to, to the TBS New Direction is about to come out at the uh, Magic Johnson Theater. Um, mm. I will let you guys know. Okay, everything has to, all the tickets have to be bought, bought online. We can't let nobody through the front door because we still, you know, we still have this virus going on. So everything has to be tickets are just twenty five dollars, I believe. So our documentary will be coming out at the end of this month. I'll let you brothers know the end of this month, and um, come on out and watch it with us. Most definitely, my brother. Just let us know. I definitely will. Once again, thank you for having me. You understand? Yes, sir. Man, okay. thank you, man, for your contribution, family. Not to get spooky with you, but I'm a spiritual brother. Mm -hmm. God 
the most high, the creator, the divine uses people the way it chooses. You That's understand? Right. And it could take the person in the gang. It could take the drug dealer. It could take the, 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 the fake person. It could take the corny person. It could raise them up family and give them power to move people. This is a prime example. And our people should know this better than anybody, right? Because we come from the bottom, at least in this country. We came from the top. They put us to the bottom, and we rising back to the top. So um, I just want to thank our good brother, Tiny, again. And I want to um, prepare to sign off, family, by saying, we can, Marcus Garvey said, wake up, rise up, you mighty people. You can accomplish whatever you will. That's not just words. That is right and exact. That's factual. Right. If we can get money together to get the weed, <laughs> we can. Hey, brother, I need five dollars. We get to get to get the liquor. We can find out what outfit we gonna wear. We can get our hair and nails together. We can get our our sneakers and all that. Family, we can get our people together like that too, if we have the right values and the right priorities and the right energy, and we come with integrity. You don't have to know it all, but you got to be sincere. And be ready to do the work, the hard work that other people don't want to do. Family, we can do it whatever we want to do. You know, I believe that our street organizations give us very important history. And we should not dismiss it because we think they're a bunch of thugs. We should really understand that they played a vital role in our history. Bumpy Johnson, if you watch The Godfather of Harlem, he, he offered Malcolm X to protect his life. When people were coming to kill him, he said, brother, I will protect your life. It's just a, just a phone call. This is a fact. And brother Malcolm said, no, sir, I don't want to see black people kill each other. But what I'm trying to get you to see is that what we call the black underground or the underworld or the gangs or whoever you want to call them have always worked in concert with those people who were like very political always. Right. And so we have to have the type of consciousness to not be judgmental that's what i'm getting to don't be judgmental it's one thing to say ah this brother or sister does this i'm not with it it's another thing to put a value judgment on a person that's being judgmental our people come in all shapes sizes colors and personalities skill sets family and what we have to do is be master chess players that see how to move all the pieces on the board all the pieces on the board if we can do that family i have no doubt in my mind three words those words are we will win peace black power kusu free the land uh, uh we want to uh thank our brother tiny once again we encourage you family take this information down on the screen uh check out his organization uh tbs new direction 347-951-0931 or at marion.frampton at gmail.com. Hit the good brother up if you're ready to get to work and help people on the ground do some real work. Thank you, family, for listening as always. And you all have a beautiful weekend. Peace. And I will see you all soon. Thank you.